Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Ashley Nilsson at the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center and welcome to the Utah Water Supply Briefing for January. All right, just a quick overview of what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, we're gonna do a quick review of precipitation both from last summer uh, and for the water year so far. Look at um, our modeled soil moisture conditions uh, then talk about current snow conditions, how those two things are impacting the uh, January water supply forecasts and what those water supply forecasts look like. Talk a little bit about early season forecast error um, and then upcoming weather and then just some take any questions anyone might have and then some contact information. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and the slides will be made available on the, the CPRFC webpage later this afternoon. Um, in terms of questions, everyone is muted right now. You can type your questions into the question box or at the end of the webinar, there'll be an opportunity to raise your hand uh, and we can take any questions um, at that time. All right, so we're gonna start by looking at a, a quick review of the 2023 monsoon season. The monsoon season is typically defined as June through September precipitation uh, kind of over Arizona uh, and the Southwest um, uh, U.S. Southwest. Um, there's two images here. The one on the upper left, this is the precipitation for June through September as a percent of average. And the image on the bottom right is the precipitation as a percentile. Um, so you can see there, there's lots of brown colors uh, over the areas that typically receive monsoon precipitation. So Arizona, Arizona the Four Corners area, uh, into Western Colorado and Eastern Utah. And those brown colors indicate that it was much below normal precipitation for that monsoon period. What's interesting is, is that you can see that uh, in the areas that typically maybe don't see uh, monsoon precip, such as um, parts of Northern Utah and into, ne into Nevada did see much above average precipitation during that June through September uh, monsoon time period. So if we zoom in a little and look just at Utah for those, um, those June through September months, these maps here are images of the monthly precipitation as percent of, percent of average for the state of Utah. Starting on the left there um, with June, those blues, uh, purples, and green colors indicate conditions um, or above normal, so above normal precipitation. And as you move into those reds, oranges and pinks, that would be below normal precipitation. So you can see that June for most of the state had above normal precipitation. Uh, July was quite dry over the entire area. And then we had August and August was had much above normal precipitation over the entire state uh, with many areas um, in the northern half of the, the state and the southern portions of the state in that two to 500% of normal precipitation for the month of August. Uh, and then looking at September, again, um, quite a bit of the state with uh, above normal precipitation for the month of September. There were a few areas, uh, parts of the Duchesne and central Utah, uh, and then the Six Creeks area that had um, more near normal to slightly below normal precipitation. All right, so we're going to take a look at our fall 2023 um, modeled soil moisture. Um, the image there on the left, this is that those conditions as a percent of average. This map here represents our soil moisture conditions from our model. Um, and these are results of both uh, last year's runoff um, and then also that summer and fall precipitation that we just discussed. So um, in November, going into the winter, soil moisture conditions for the state of Utah, for the most part, were near to above normal. Um, both having that above normal runoff and then that above normal precipitation during the summer and fall um, put us in a good situation going into the winter with uh, above to near normal soil moisture conditions. Uh, so why do these matter? Um, soil moisture conditions can impact water supply and runoff. So above normal, so above normal soil moisture conditions uh, can result in um, a positive impact or increased runoff efficiency while below normal soil conditions have more of a negative impact and potentially decreased runoff efficiency. Uh, but the important thing to remember here is that the timing magnitude of spring runoff is not only a result of these soil moisture conditions, but also of snowpack conditions and spring weather. All right, so how do these soil moisture conditions from last fall compare to the prior year? 
So on the left hand side, that's the image you saw on the previous slide. So fall of 2023 with those near normal to above normal soil, soil moisture conditions. Uh, the middle image there is from the prior year, so fall of 2022. And you can see that um, in fall of 2022, uh, the state of Utah had below normal soil moisture conditions with the exception of the south slope of the Uintas there that were closer to near normal, slightly above normal, but everything else was below normal. The image on the far right, that's just a difference between those two maps, the percent of average difference. So those green colors indicate that there's been an improvement in those soil moisture conditions and the gray colors indicate that things are about the same. So you can see there that for the majority of the state, the soil moisture conditions are much better um, last fall than they were the previous fall. All right, so as we move more into the water year, we'll take a look at water year precipitation. So the water year 2024, starting in October. Um, uh, there on the left-hand side, you can see portions, northern basins, so Bear River, parts of the Weber, uh, Six Creeks area had above normal precipitation for October, uh, where the rest of the state had below normal precipitation. Everywhere was quite dry for the month of November. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part, uh, below normal precip for the month of November. And then December, that December graphic looks quite similar to that October graphic with those northern basins, including the Bear, Weber portions of the Six Creeks area being favored uh, in terms of precipitation with conditions being uh, near to above normal where the rest of the state um, was below normal to much below normal for the month of December. All right, so if we look at the water year, um, October through December total precip, this maps just a little bit of a different way to look at those previous three months combined. Um, you can see there that uh, in terms of percent of average conditions are best in the, those northern basins. So the Bear, the Weber, and Six Creeks area, their water year precipitation is around 80 to 85% of normal. And as we move south, things tend to, to get drier and um, near more near that 50 to 70% of normal and even 40% of normal in the Virgin River Basin. So things are off, we're off to a pretty slow start um, in looking at below average water year precipitation with the exception of a few of those northern basins. All right, so taking a look at January 1st snowpack conditions, um, the image there you see is a combination of both the NRCS snow tell uh, location, those are the squares, um, and the shading in the background is our uh, modeled snow from uh, CBRFC. And the colors there are the percent of median. Um, and what you can see here is, uh, again, um, conditions are below normal uh, with conditionings, conditions worsening as you move from north to south. So uh, best conditions uh, on January 1st were in those same areas where the precip had been a bit better, uh, the Bear, the Weber, Six Creeks, and then things really deteriorating uh, as you look over into the Duchesne uh, and move into the Price San Rafael, Severe and Virgin, uh, with the Virgin River snowpack on January 1st being only 11% of normal. All right. So we'll take a look at the water supply forecast for Utah. Uh, image there on the left, this is all the points um, where we make water supply forecasts for the state of Utah. They're colored, they're shaded as a percent of average. Um, the majority of them uh, are below normal. There are a handful that are near normal. Um, those near normal forecasts are in areas where there's better soil moisture conditions and better snowpack conditions. And the table on the right there, this is just a, a subset of points, a point from each of the major river basins. Um, so Bear, a headwater point in the Bear, Bear near Utah-Wyoming state line is around 80% of normal on that January 1st forecast. Uh, Weber near Oakley, 75% of normal. Uh, Big Cottonwood, 85% of normal. Provo Woodland around 79. Tabiona, Duchesne or Tabiona around 71. And then as we move south into the severe and virgin, both of the forecasts in the severe and virgin are regulated forecasts. Um, severe at Hatch is currently 62. 
uh, and that virgin near virgin is 84% of normal. That virgin near virgin forecast is um, a little bit higher than you might expect. Given the snowpack conditions, this is being weighted um, uh, with uh, ENSO or El Nino conditions with the chances that they'll be above normal precipitation there based on the, the El Nino uh, forecast. All right, so we'll take a little bit closer look at a handful of points in each basin. Um, this is the Bear River Basin. On the left here, you can see all the forecast points in the Bear River Basin. The shading in the background there is our uh, modeled snow from January 1st as a percent of normal. Um, the forecast range in the Bear right now is forecasts are ranging from 70 to 95 percent of normal. Um, you can see the water supply evolution plot there on the top. Um, the, the shaded area in the background is our, um, our model guidance with the solid line in the middle being the 50% exceeds forecast. We run our model every single day. And then starting on January 1st, you can see that pink bar, which is the official forecast. These are probabilistic forecasts uh, ranging from with a 90% exceedance forecast up to a 10% exceedance forecast with that 50% exceedance forecast there in the middle near that solid blue line. Um, you can also see the average, the median, and then the minimum uh, historical volumes on these plots. Um, this is for Logan, the Logan River near Logan. Um, the January 1st forecast is 102,000 acre feet or 96% of average. Uh, looking at um, Tony Grove Snowtel, which is located in the basin, um, the green line is last year. Blue line is this year. Snow water equivalent is on the y-axis. Time on the x-axis. Currently, it's at 95% of normal or median for that uh, Tony Grove snow tell. You can see that we had that pretty significant event uh, in early December, and then um, essentially no snow for about a month. And then over the past few days, we've seen a little bit of accumulation there. But conditions definitely worse than where we were at last year at this time. Moving into the Weber River Basin, uh, forecasts are ranging from 65 to 90% of average. Um, the water supply evolution plot there is looking at the inflow into Pine View Reservoir on the Ogden River. Uh, January 1st forecast there was 83,000 acre feet or 76% of average. And then on the bottom there, this is a group snow tell plot for the Ogden River drainage. So it's including around six snow tell sites that are in or near that basin. And it's currently right around 85% of median with that dashed line being the 91 through 20 median. Moving into the Provo River Basin, forecasts are ranging from 55 to 90% of average. Uh, we'll take a closer look at Provo near Woodland, one of the headwater locations in the Provo. Um, January 1st forecast was 76,000 acre feet or 79% of average. And you can see here that on that January 1st forecast, there was only about a 30% chance of um, getting average April through July runoff based on those uh, January 1st um, current conditions. And then looking at the trial Lake Snowtel, um, right around 57% of average. And as you can see, they're kind of near the bottom end of that historical distribution for 1991 through 2020. So not great snow conditions in the headwaters of the Provo right now. Um, looking at Six Creeks Basin, um, forecasts are ranging from 85 to 100% of normal. Um, the water supply evolution plot, plot there we're zoomed into is Big Cottonwood Creek. Um, with that January 1st forecast being 29,000 acre feet, about 85% of average. And then on the bottom there is a, taking a look at the bright and snow tell, um, right around 69% of median, um, but quite shocking to see where we're at compared to where we were at last year at this time. And then moving over into the, the Duchesne River Basin, um, Forecasts in the Duchesne, um, unfortunately, the Duchesne right now, uh, they didn't have as wet of a summer period as other parts of Utah did, and the snowpack is um, quite poor in the Duchesne. So those forecasts are only ranging from 50 to 70% of normal on January 1st. Um, 
if we zoom in to look at the influence Moon Lake Reservoir on the Lake Fork River, um, January 1st forecast was 38,000 acre feet, 59% of average, and about a 10% chance on January 1st with the current conditions that we may see uh, record low April through July runoff if things continue to stay dry in the Duchesne River Basin. In the bottom there is the snow tail plot from the Lake Fork snow tail. It's at about 11,000 feet. Um, blue line being this year, it's currently 57% of, of normal, but you can see there that it's currently lowest on record for uh, this time in January. So pretty poor conditions in the, in the, on the south slope of the Uintas right now, um, which are reflected both in that water supply forecast and then in that you know, snow tail and modeled snow information. Then moving all the way south into the Virgin and Severe River basins, um, forecasts here are ranging from 30 to 105 percent of normal. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, those near normal or above normal forecasts are in the Virgin, where the, the forecasts are being um, weighted towards a, a wetter um, weather pattern based on the current El Nino conditions. Um, <clears throat> looking at the severe or near hatch forecast, um, there on the top with the evolution plot, uh, January 1st forecast was 30,000 acre feet or 62% of average. And then there's a, uh, the headwater snow tail grouping there on the bottom for the Severe River, uh, current snowpack, 54% uh, of normal. Okay, so this is just a quick look at uh, our typical January forecast error for those April through July volumes that we're forecasting. Um, the map has all of the forecast points. Um, as a, you can see, the, the dots are colored by that percent error. And in the table on the right, there's a subset of kind of some of the major uh, water supply points within the basins. Um, average January 1st forecast error ranges anywhere from 20 to 45 percent. Um, really the biggest source of error on January 1st is future weather. Um, we're forecasting in April through July volume. It's January 1st. Uh, we have multiple months left of future weather um, that are going to impact these forecasts um, as we move through the season. So as we move through the season, that error does tend to decrease decrease as we know how much snow we have on the ground and there's less uncertainty in what that future weather might look like. All right, so January so far, so uh, from some of those snow tail plots, we had that early December event and then um, essentially have ha not had uh, really any significant precip since that um, early December event. Um, the good news is we did see a pattern change. Things have started to active weather has returned. Um, these are the daily precipitation maps, so observed 24-hour precip maps from the 1st of January through this morning. You can see there starting around the 4th, uh, we did start to see a series of storms uh, move into the area and some colder temperatures and, and started to see some precipitation, so um, that's good news. That active weather is going to continue. Um, this is the seven day uh, precipitation forecast. So um, on the, the tape, the image there on the right, um, there's each of the days and then you can see the seven day total there in the, in the bottom right. So active weather is continuing. We're gonna see periods of snow, particularly in, in portions of Northern Utah, um, really every day for the next week or so. Um, and it does look like the heaviest amounts of precip are going to be in that uh, northern Utah area, so um, the Bear, the Weber, Six Creeks, Provo, uh, and parts of the Duchesne, but more focused in the central Wasatch uh, moving north for right now. And then looking a little bit further out, this is the week two outlook. So this is for um, January 15th through 21st. Um, the eight to 14 day precipitation outlook there on the left hand side. Um, is showing increased chances for above normal precipitation over the northern portion of the state and um, near normal pre equal chances for near normal precipitation kind of over the southern half of the state. Uh, and then increased 
increased chances for below normal temperatures over the northern portion of the state with near normal temperatures uh, on the, in the southern portion of the state. All right, so quick summary. Uh, soil moisture conditions are near to above normal over the state of Utah with much better conditions than last year um, as a result of, of both uh, above normal uh, snowpack runoff last year and then above normal precipitation during the summer and fall months. Um, right now, snow conditions are below normal. Uh, better conditions in those northern basins, the Bear, Weber, Six Creeks area, but still below normal. Um, and in other basins, including the Duchesne, Severe, and Virgin, um, near record low early January conditions in terms of snowpack. January water supply forecasts are near to below normal. Um, these forecasts may trend uh, higher in the northern basins by mid-January if we do see that forecast precipitation verified to look like we're in an active pattern. This is going to definitely help out those conditions and I would expect to see those evolution plots trend upward by the middle part of the month if, if the forecast uh, works out. And then, yeah, active weather will continue at least through this week. All right, so we typically do these water supply webinars um, the first of every month after we issue our water supply forecast. We also do a Colorado River Basin webinar. This is typically at 10 a.m. before this webinar. Um, and then you can see there, this is just the schedule for the upcoming webinars for the rest of the year. Um, we'll also do a peak flow forecast webinar on Monday, March 20th. Uh, and you can, the schedule and the registration information is all on our website. And you can get to that if you go to uh, the news or there's a link on the top of the website to register for the webinars. Uh, so there you can see all the, the webinars that are available and upcoming and how to register for those. And then also here there's um, some email lists that you can sign up for if you want to get uh, forecast updates or our forecast discussion uh, when those are issued um, during the water supply season. And then just a quick update about our web page. Um, the front page, the front view of our web page has changed slightly over the last week or so. Um, there's some really great new options. One of them is that you can filter uh, the area to the, your points of interest. So there on the top, there's a, an option called filter points and it pops up the, what you see there on the right. And you can select only the basins or areas of your interest. It will zoom to that area on the map and then it will provide you a, a quick little table there on the bottom with the current water supply forecast percent of median, percent of average, and a, as a percentile. Um, there's a lot of new features on the front page um, about zooming and selecting data. Um, and that's, there's still some improvements coming, some enhancements coming. Um, in addition to the front page, all of our data plots um, have been migrated uh, to a more interactive um, software. Um, this includes our snow tail plots, our speed plots, our water supply evolution plots. They're now more similar to what our 10-day uh, streamflow hydrograph plots are like. Um, as I mentioned, you can hover, you can get a lot more information. Uh, and then there's the options have changed slightly and the look of it has changed slightly. So um, work's continuing on the web page. Um, please feel free uh, to reach out with any uh, questions, if you see any issues, any feedback. Um, as we work through this transition um, to some new enhancements and, and more informative interactive plots on the website. So you can either give one of us a call, shoot us an email, or you can email the webmaster um, if you have, have questions or issues or see anything that might need to be, to be updated or fixed. Uh, and then lastly, this is just a listing of our contacts. Um, and who's forecasting what basins for the year. Um, funny enough, I'm giving the webinar for Utah, but I am the only one that doesn't forecast in Utah. So you can see your Utah forecasters there on the left-hand side and a handful of them are on the phone today if you have specific questions for them. Um, but feel free to get in touch with any of us. Our emails are there. Uh, if you wanna catch anybody on the phone, the best um, phone number there is to call the operations line. You can talk to the hydrologist or get to any one of us. 
or you can send the operations uh, an email and it will get passed on to whoever um, the best person is for that. Uh, we also have three job openings available right now. Um, one of them is currently open. Uh, the link is there. It's for hydrologist, meteorologist job opening. There's also a link on our website for that. So if you know anyone that's interested, uh, please pass that info along. And then they'll, two more will be coming um, hopefully soon. And I think that's everything from me uh, for today. So um, I'll see if there's any questions or if you have a question, uh, please feel free to raise your hand and we can unmute you. All right, <clears throat> I don't see any questions now or anyone's hands up. So uh, thanks for joining us today. I hope you'll join us in February and uh, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions or, or concerns. Thank you.